So, hi everyone. So, today it is the last talk of uh, our uh, series of B Talks. I'm really pleased to welcome uh, Professor uh, Mohamed Sawan today with uh, Francois. Uh, I, as, I, as we can say, uh, we are going to finish uh, with uh, one uh, of the best talks for the year. So, we are really pleased to have you today, uh, Professor Sawan. So before to uh, proceed to the, to the live talk, uh, I'm just quickly going to show you uh, the next uh, IEEE event. So here's a slide uh, just to show you uh, the, the talk of today. So uh, made by uh, Professor Mohamed Sawan on uh, will sciences and technologies becoming enough powerful to mimic the brain. So enjoy. So to go quickly, so some call for papers. So RFIC, it's going to be on the beginning of January 2021. Then foodcast on the same day of RFIC call papers, so don't miss it. Uh, then also the NICAS call for paper at the beginning of, of February 2021. And then again, as uh, all uh, Thursdays, don't miss our uh, IEEE season school uh, at Bordeaux on IoT. It will be uh, between the the end of May to the beginning of June 2021. So thank you, and I'm going to let uh, Professor Francois uh, Rivet uh, say a few words. Thank you, Roman. Uh, so I, I would like to thank very much Professor Mohamed Sawan for his participation to this last talk. First, for his exquisite research to share with us uh, what could have been a better subject for this last talk. Also, uh, because Mohamed is a good friend and we have shared so much since I would say debate, is an iconic character of IEEE Circuit and System Society and having him with us today is an honor. So uh, last, Mohamed is a role model for our students because he motivates what uh, we like in electrical engineering. Uh, I mean that uh, to have a brilliant career full of innovation to provide disruptive ideas and also as uh, a humankind to be humble and so respectful with all his colleagues over the world. Of course, uh, and uh, we have the pleasure, we have the pleasure to meet uh, many times in many places and I can remember the first time was at Montreal uh, where you were a professor at Polytechnique de Montreal and the last time was in China when uh, where you are now a professor at Westlake University in Anglu and you are the director of a world leading and cutting edge laboratory. So thank you again. Merci encore uh, Mohamed for your participation contribution today in this video. Thank you. All right. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, my friend uh, Francois, a very uh, gentle introduction. Yeah, I, actually, uh, uh, sorry about this COVID stuff. We, we, we don't meet, uh, we don't meet uh, as usual a uh, couple of times per year, as you said. I hope you can visit me soon here in China. So uh, uh, thanks, uh, uh, Roman, also, and the, the group of B. Uh, uh, Bordeaux B Talks. Uh, so thank you. Uh, actually, congratulations for your, uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, how to say achievement or uh, or magic or magic or I don't know uh, active activity. Uh, organizing this talk is uh, fa fantastic. And uh, uh, then uh, 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 how to say? So I have uh, forty-five minutes, one hour to summarize my. Uh, my talk here about where we are on this biocast, biomedical circuit and system. So, uh, uh, as maybe uh, you you see, you understand, you you heard from uh, Francois. I was in Ecole Polytechnique in Montreal, where we have also a B. If you see you see our logo on the center, is different B, you know. And then we talk about my group. There is Polystem. We have uh, ma many stimulating uh, neurotechnology projects there. And then I moved to this place uh, in China, Westlake University, a fantastic city. The name is Hanzhou. And uh, this new university, the first private university in China, is, uh, uh, is uh, world-class excellence. The objective here 
uh, uh, Westlake University actually have a nickname or second name in China. The name is Caltech China. This means we are not really competing with uh, with any local or any user university, but we have a uh, vision to be different with, uh, with anything that's been done now in teaching and research. So uh, this is uh, the introduction. This is my, uh, at the top uh, of my slide, again, the name of my uh, new uh, lab. So I am, uh, we are now around 25 people, uh, my group uh, pushing on a different, uh, of course, topic related to neurodegeneration. So neurodegeneration means the brain, as you know, have many, many uh, issues uh, not understood yet. So uh, I think we'll conclude together the title of my, of course, talk means uh, all those uh, neuromimetics, uh, mimicking, etc. Uh, try to do something similar to brain, but uh, believe me, far away to uh, understand the brain so far. So we cannot imitate if the brain is not understood. This lady here uh, uh, came, this image uh, from, uh, 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 of course, big group in U US uh, called Brain Gate. Uh, we talk about mind driven decision means this, this lady is quad quadriplegic, paraplegic, nothing can bouge, uh, unfortunately, but uh, of course the brain is uh, intact, uh, good shape. Then uh, we do neuro recording, you see this very uh, big uh, plug on the top connecting to the, to the motor side inside the brain. Then when the lady sink to drink water, for example, here, those uh, recorded uh, information, we means uh, computer based to do a neuro encoding and uh, convert those uh, series of spikes from different region inside the brain to instruction in order to control this hand robotics. So quickly done in my introduction. We talk about matrix of a pin this this matrix of pin kind of standard we talk about 10 by 10 one pin is around one point uh, something millimeter one millimeter very small you can imagine we have here uh, on top of the picture again one plug one uh, tools i say can can really insert this electrode to go to the level uh, where we can maximize of course the reading and do the control Recently, not far from Bordeaux in the PFL, uh, this group uh, was able to record from the, the brain of the monkey and have a closed loop system, means record from the brain and stimulate, electrically stimulate and the spinal cord in order to recover the uh, leg activity or walking of the monkey. Uh, everyone, uh, of course, he must uh, hear or heard about uh, uh, Parkinson. As you can see, those small uh, spot of light wiring come from uh, the chest on the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the front of the human. We have wiring coming up and coming down to the central part of the brain. Talk about thalamus, and they're stimulating help Parkinsonian means it stop. Uh, those people stop shaking or uh, means, uh, uh, of course, improves the quality of life. Then here, talk about DARPA, uh, two years ago uh, already uh, 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 granted a big budget to a group to do recording from one million sites. One million sites. It is not one million, of course, neuron, because when you put this pin inside, inside this 3D of neuron, you can touch many of those neurons. Anyway, but usually we talk about, of course, uh, one million channel to record and uh, to have uh, more we have, more uh, better. Uh, you maybe heard about, if you are uh, interested on, on, of course, this field, brain machine interface, Elon Musk have uh, not only car, and I don't know, he also is interested on and working on biocast, biomedical circuit and system. So he built uh, a, a equipment to help insert those electrodes with very little, maybe how to say invasive technique and have system anyway, close to any other, but uh, also maybe a little bit uh, sophisticated in terms of look. And then of course, uh, doing uh, more work on this field. 
and the more uh, I think effective, I maybe I am pushing a little bit in my group here, is to uh, do, of course, optogenetics. And if here we talk about uh, the bottom side, lab on chip for LOC and organ on chip. So we want to stop uh, sacrificing rat and cat and animal in order to do testing before we go to human. And uh, the, the, this is the objective or organ on chip. But in general, we want to go between two neural cells and characterize those neurotransmitters and see the problem coming from communication between cells, not from any other maybe purpose inside the brain. Then, of course, the idea here, we as engineer, bioengineer, as you know, we are trying to create or build investigation tools. Means we need to discover the brain, uh, MRI, uh, CT scan, uh, ultrasound, etc. We can enumerate a lot are not really as, uh, effective or sufficient or efficient to, uh, to go to, to different region to, to characterize more, to do reading, etc. Then uh, we need to develop those tools in order to be able to build better prosthetics. So if more, more with the diagnostic is clear, more we can have solutions. And then, of course, neurogeneration, we talk about uh, several, maybe dozen of problems. Uh, put here a couple of, of, of those, and I will only focus on my presentation on vision and epilepsy. Those, uh, I think, uh, where I am pushing uh, more, I was pushing more when I was in Montreal and uh, keep pushing. So, uh, outline uh, after this uh, 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 introduction, I hope uh, you I don't uh, lose you. <laughs> we we'll go to brain machine interface. Uh, talk about vision, as I just mentioned, uh, and vision means both direction. Again, we need the closed loop to do neural recording, uh, uh, neural encoding, uh, coding, and then stimulation in order to create, of course, phosphine means create light for the blind, mean allow the blind to see. And then we talk about uh, wearable. Of course, wearable is a hot topic now for everywhere in the planet. We don't want to do surgery, of course, if, if we can solve, why not? But also wearable is not, is almost useless to go uh, uh, to complex uh, uh, functions inside the body, not only inside the brain. So I will tell you what we do in epilepsy, uh, location, detection, abortion, prediction, then uh, biosensor at the end, then other things so, uh, while we are crossing those. So uh, vision. Are you with me? Hello? Hello? Do you hear me? Yeah, we will. We can super bien. Yes, we can hear you well. Yeah. All right. So I continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry. Okay. Thank you. So, vision recovery. Uh, uh, this is uh, brain machine interface again. So, uh, this is the. the uh, Topography, I can say, or the, the who does what uh, uh, these uh, days uh, in, 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 in the planet, everywhere, in our research lab. So these blue, uh, dark, all group are working on artificial retina. So I know uh, France have a very large group doing artificial retina, uh, uh, also parallel to a large group in California, second site. Uh, but they have many, 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 as you see here, everywhere you have many groups doing artificial retina. However, uh, as you can imagine, artificial retina is, uh, is not really useful for many people because to use artificial retina, you have to have uh, intact uh, neuro optic nerves. You have to have uh, all kinds of other small, maybe organs, tissue around to transmit the information from the retina to inside the brain, because this is the brain who do the, the, the work, not the retina only. And then the retina, you have to have a fresh blind, means you have accident, I hope no, anyway, uh, I have accident myself and lose uh, 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 my, uh, my uh, sight, uh, my vision, and then I have to run to those clinics in order to have artificial retina. 
So it's not really uh, useful. Also, so far, uh, I hope uh, uh, stuff is improving, but uh, the preliminary feedback are not so exciting. Means uh, a patient can see something, but uh, far away to recover normal vision, of course. So uh, then we uh, we see those three uh, green, uh, maybe rectangular here. So we have a group in Illinois Institute of Technology in US. We have a group in Spain, Cortivis, and we have a group in Australia called Monash. So my group, uh, red color here, I was I started this project here a long time ago in in Montreal, and now I am here in Hanju uh, pushing a little bit more with uh, much more resources. I hope uh, we can achieve better results. So what we are doing, uh, give you idea, this cartoon. Uh, very simple to see the principle means we have a camera and uh, sorry we have a camera and we have uh, 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 of course processor if you know uh, actually uh, cochlear implant for hearing is the same instead of camera you have a micro and you have a processor can be placed this way then you have antenna to wirelessly communicate remotely with the uh, internal side uh, unit this unit from one side we have antenna and we have a kind of main uh, module or main chip to recover energy and to power up all those green units and while we are powering we can do monitoring we can do recording and we can do stimulation so on all, on all those directions every one of those uh, small green unit we call it uh, actually uh, kind of uh, uh, a monitoring and stimulation unit. From one side, we have a matrix of a pin, means, uh, for example, four per four, five per five, different uh, uh, units. And on top of this matrix, we flip a chip and we connect pad to pad, as maybe you can see on this picture here. Uh, this is uh, uh, maybe summarized here again. And then, uh, uh, on uh, uh, the right side, you have this uh, maybe uh, shows the brain, I have a red color. This is the primary region of the vision, which is several centimeters square, very large, of course. And then we can put uh, many of those uh, four per four. So we can have a thousand covering all these uh, are very small, we take about two millimeter uh, wide, uh, every one of those matrix. We have uh, one here. And then uh, instead of having those uh, wiring, actually those wiring are not disturbing anything, but we can remove and can be completely wireless all those units, like a button, you can put this and, but every one of those units is a kind of uh, very nice uh, electronic system doing signal processing, uh, doing uh, all those functions. Maybe you can read sensor, activator, transceiver to communicate, power source, power, uh, means recovery source and uh, of course memory to to run external part of this uh, system is uh, looks like this a lot of building block we can also spend time but ne not necessary it means i have a, a image of course real time imaging to extract uh, the necessary information or the resolution i want usually not necessary to be uh, again very large then we have to have a map uh, with uh, uh, fit or fitting, do fitting with the visual topic of uh, our brain. Means uh, it's not really uh, pixel to pixel. Is as you see here, we go to from square to kind of canonic format, and then uh, we send this information to inside, and we distribute to those unit to those pin. So of course there are a lot of. Uh, 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 analog and makes a signal circuitry to do those scanning and those distribution. And we end up by, of course, uh, stimulating to have something similar to this uh, cartoon I am showing here. Now, we're stimulating without, again, uh, 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 I, I close, as, uh, close it as we know, <laughs> is not effective. So we have to learn from, from this region where the optic nerves bring information to the brain we are sitting there to see what the eye is sending there. And then the idea to imitate 
those uh, pattern of, uh, of, of, of signal of information and to give to the brain in order to let the brain uh, mimic and, uh, and give us image as uh, we want. So this system for narrow recording, the title here, uh, matrix of pin again, but here is more, more complex uh, reading, amplification, uh, control, uh, etc., decoding, and RF link to send the information to outside uh, to, to learn about what's happening. And every one of those chip, of course, is uh, enough details is if you are doing microelectronics. So you can see, for example, the first chip is uh, four per four block. Every block is low noise amplifier, is uh, amplifier, uh, uh, is uh, filter, is uh, uh, conversion to digital, and uh, so on. So we have uh, uh, 16 similar uh, stuff channel. Give you an idea about the power consumption and, uh, and the area. The, the second chip is memory a little bit less, smaller, I'd say. And the last one is the RF block. So actually, all this, what I am showing in my presentation, is done in was done in, 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 in majority in Montreal, except the chip fabrication, of course. Where Canada doesn't have any fab facility, fabricate on TSMC or on ST or et cetera. And then, um, but everything in terms of assembly, packaging, uh, we do uh, in my lab. I have, I have good, good uh, uh, facility in Montreal. And uh, I am building something maybe a little bit more up to date here in China. And then, uh, in short, uh, you have those pin. One pin catch uh, signal from the neural signal, as I just said. Then uh, one pin is related to one channel. Channel means, again, uh, low noise amplifier, filter, etc., analog processor, and so on. So all this part actually is in sleep mode, consume nothing, except when we have a signal uh, recorded, because actually, of course, the good news in, in biomedical we talk about uh, low frequency. We are not uh, competing with uh, uh, the people in EMS Bordeaux with uh, 60 gigahertz. I don't know. <laughs> Means we talk about here uh, under, uh, I don't know, uh, maybe 10 kilohertz. Then we have time to turn on and off any channel, and we keep every channel in, in sleep mode. I know this analog processor is uh, it means monitoring, calculating the energy in a signal. So this is based on Tiger energy operator, very well known in, in signal processing. It locates the energy level. And then uh, these three blocks, the processor evaluates this. And then uh, we have to uh, latch when, uh, when we, we catch a spike. And then we have to wait this time delay in order to deliver the information after this delay to be in the right time. So this is, we have a window and we can activate and run. So this system actually receive energy from outside using uh, this now standard uh, electromagnetic coupling. Uh, and we have uh, different uh, uh, means also transmission. We can use electromagnetic transmission or we can use a kind of radio, but a very, very small, very low frequency, a very low uh, power consumption. This uh, Tiger energy operator to do the work, uh, give you idea, consume, uh, 780 nanowatt, so less than one milliwatt, and uh, was designed with this technology. Now I think it, we can do this with less than 100 nanowatt, <laughs> means power is very small and area is extremely small. Electrode, uh, there are um, too many things to say, but quickly, available electrode, uh, the standard one are 2D flat. It can be with some uh, maybe angular or ramp, or it can be uh, many, uh, many chunk, many, many uh, vector of, uh, of electrode. This is Michigan. These are uh, Utah uh, and company now. Uh, so, but in my group, uh, we do 3D. The only one we, the only one we, we, we 3D available in my group. We can, is very complex micro machining. Uh, not really only uh, means we need a, 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 a Die so we need really to isolate every pin from each other. We need to cover, we need to treat to be biocompatible, but we need to leave the tip conductor and also biocompatible. So a lot of complexity give you idea how we cut and then we end up with those 3D because we want to go to 
some region in the brain, uh, uh, V4, V2, etc. There we have uh, a kind of uh, layer on the brain, which is not uh, flat, is also 3D inside. We have to cover this. So a lot of processing. I can maybe skip this, give you ideas of what are those electrodes. We do test in rat. So in, to of, of course, to practice uh, how to build, uh, to install those electrodes and to uh, do recording, to do stimulation. Uh, of course, the rat is not uh, useful for uh, for uh, uh, to, to tell us if he can see or not, but up to us to deliver kind of spot uh, left, right, show uh, some light to, to rat to escape uh, or something like that. So preliminary and we can demonstrate our electronic survive after those uh, tests. So this is the purpose of uh, doing tests in, in rat. Then move to monkey where uh, tests can be much more elaborated means uh, as in monkey here we have uh, one uh, uh, first uh, uh, couple of steps means we show image we record uh, the, the monkey is normal can see so we show image we can record from the brain what uh, what's happening then this using of course latest uh, mach uh, ma ma machine learning and uh, ai etc we recover from the, from those uh, after doing all the process you know about now it's very hot topic AI. Then we extract some uh, uh, instruction waveform. Then we uh, we cover the eye of the of the of the of the monkey, and we stimulate back using those pattern uh, uh, and uh, try to recover the same percept in the monkey. So this is easy again to explain, but not easy to quantify and to to do a road on this to uh, but we are progressing so uh, for example now uh, we uh, we have many results in terms of encoding uh, we, we have for example this uh, array uh, uh, screen in the front of the of the monkey we can have one fixed spot of light and we can move different one inside this array and we can see what's happening from the neural system inside the brain uh, uh, means in terms of activation there are many techniques to measure this inside the brain it can be unit multi-unit it can be local field etc etc and give us idea what's happening to improve and to improve the parameter of stimulation okay then here we talk about uh, power and uh, transfer because i am sure uh, we talk about here uh, a B uh, talk. Uh, I think you saw a lot of stuff over the year, I guess. So uh, we talk about here electronic a little bit. Power transfer. Uh, uh, we don't want to, you can imagine, uh, no room to put big battery uh, like wearable. Here we don't have wearable. We have to, to have implant completely inside the brain and no room inside the brain. So we, have, we need to have, do uh, energy harvesting scavenging from outside so uh, i think also uh, quickly uh, there are many techniques to do harvesting energy but uh, all of these are uh, non uh, really uh, uh, interesting are non-useful non for uh, for bio application because of course when we, we are blind you can imagine we cannot run we cannot vibrate we don't want to vibrate <laughs> Then, etc. Thermo uh, piezo is not effective yet. We need to cover the whole body to to recover some energy uh, uh, inside the body. All those technique uh, uh, enzyme neural cell. Also, maybe we need uh, very complex electronic to recover. Uh, maybe hundred of microwatts. Still not effective. We talk about uh, fuel cell is dangerous for the body. We don't want to use. Then we have two alternatives here to go quickly. This is we talk about radio. Uh, everyone now have mobile uh, around many, uh, many standard, of course, of those signal, uh, as you know, uh, one, one gigahertz, 2.4, etc., etc. And then uh, the, the higher gigahertz are coming. So we can recover energy. We have uh, different technique. For example, talk about here as oscillator can run with 50 millivolt. This can can boost uh, the regular uh, DC-DC, uh, AC to DC, then DC-DC converter 
to recover uh, needed voltage and needed current. We are progressing on this, is optimistic. But now, uh, if we have large, large system inside the body, still the inductive powering, as I just mentioned, transcutaneous link is the way. There are actually Chinese standard of this called the Qi, and uh, we can do electromagnetic very easily to, for this. In our group, we do not only electromagnetic, we do also power calibration. So through the same two antenna, we can have a feedback using low, low shift keying in order to ask the external amplifier to send more or less energy to, to of course, to be uh, secure and safe for the skin, etc., etc. So the rectifier is a, a, a main block here to recover energy, as you know, and uh, uh, traditional uh, maybe a circuitry, this uh, bridge, you know, about is uh, poor in terms of power efficiency. So I will show you, maybe we do something for this, but meanwhile, uh, load shift keying in, in short means we are switching this bridge on two position and we can have regular one or only two diode as you see here. Then the total impedance at the reception change between two value and this can be easily de detected by the emitter. So we can do full duplex here, transmit at high frequency and recover data from inside with a layer shift keying. So uh, calibrated or not, this uh, top one is not calibrated, and this one is calibrated. Uh, and the uh, uh, bottom side, we have two examples when we can see uh, first half is not calibrated, but the second one, it is with this technique uh, calibration. Then uh, we have a system with three pair of those electromagnetic. Uh, uh, means the middle one here, as you see, is for power, and the two extremity, one for downlink and one for uplink. As uh, their name mentioned, means we uh, we uh, specify different frequency in order because the low frequency is needed to maximize the recovered energy, but we need to run as, at uh, higher data a little bit. So data actually this, those frequency are allowed for bio application. This is why we, we select those. Uh, this rectifier, as I just said, uh, is a problem in terms of uh, power efficiency. So we. We did uh, good work recently, we removed all diet and have this topology, improve it a little bit, uh, optimize it, etc. And we compare here, uh, uh, the green is full wave bridge rectifier. Uh, the red is those topology with, uh, with uh, a transistor uh, mount mounted diet. And our uh, topology here, we can, assume, we can see the blue with, of course, a very high efficiency and a very fast response. Okay, and then the radio, uh, re we revisit FSK uh, technique and to minimize uh, everything and keep doing the work because we want really to send signal to around uh, two meter, three meter. We don't need to run between country. And we have a budget very small, one milliwatt. So what we can do with this, uh, uh, can we do 100 kilobit per second is enough. So this is the purpose. Uh, FSK emitter and go to antenna. Uh, these are the circuitry. Uh, we have a publication if you are interested to, to know how uh, those blocks are, uh, are built and uh, etc. So you have, uh, uh, this is a front uh, uh, back, uh, uh, front end stage amplifier on this block uh, uh, here uh, on the FSK uh, chip, uh, of course, uh, board to test. And for the uh, uh, receiver, so we, we we got FSK, we convert to uh, to ASK using uh, 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 injection looking uh, ahead oscillator. Looking oscillator is a, a recent, but a good topology to do this. So we move from 915 to middle, actually, Approximately, we go to ASK and it becomes very easy to recover the signal. So different chip, different technology. Uh, we did it. Uh, we did not really build everything for from one <laughs> for one chip. So we have many study to arrive to to this uh, result. I am showing you here. You know, and then uh, go to epilepsy. <clears throat> Another application very important. So uh, still have time. Yeah. 
Uh, usually, epilepsy, uh, we need to do localization. What does it mean? Uh, detection, treatment, prediction. Let me show you. Okay, so this problem actually is uh, one out of 100 individuals have epilepsy. So one of out uh, one out of 100. So if I go back, I have to go back. Sorry, here to tell you, epileptic seizures are kind of explosive nature, and uh, it uh, it comes from uh, a small signal and then emerge everywhere inside our brain. And then this is excess, excessive dem demand of energy. Then the, the brain and the body cannot support. Then, of course, we lose control. We can, we can uh, of course, fail. Uh, we can, I don't know, this is very dangerous. I don't show image. I don't like this. But uh, maybe you have idea about that. Then, then the problem of this is uh, uh, what to do. Anyway, the problem uh, in, in short, talk about localization. The, we have uh, one neuron inside the brain start this problem how to locate this one neuron out of 10 billion as you know so this is the complexity uh, we cannot of course be aggressive to find this because this you, you create more more i think uh, damage than solving <laughs> then uh, you people say till now grosso modo or or so far use uh, 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 medication, drugs, but still 35% of people are refractory. So no any medical or or, 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 or or solution can help them. So means we have to, to do narrow, uh, means uh, to locate uh, where this comes from, uh, because it emerges from one side, one place, and emerge everywhere. So this is like you have a forest, and you have tree where start the fire, but how to find this this tree when the fire is everywhere? You know this is this is the issue. <clears throat> so we need to uh, to to try uh, anyway all kind of imaging technique uh, used, but also the other complexity. These uh, epileptic seizures are random, so for the same person, sometimes have many uh, maybe Caesar per day or per hour, I don't know. And sometimes maybe uh, have one every three or four months or five months, I don't know. So I'm, I am just exaggerating or give example, just to say is completely random. Then you cannot go to the hospital and uh, sleep on the uh, MRI where you you know uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the access to those equipment is, is very costly and uh, and uh, not easy anyway. You can buy your machine, but you cannot sleep <laughs> on those uh, MRIs. So then you cannot be used. All other technique I can enumerate, but uh, EEG, uh, uh, optic, etc., are still not effective. Then the idea, if you locate and it's at the surface of the brain, top surface is easy. They can do some surgery, and they can, of course, maybe fix the problem, and it happened uh, and some percentage. But if it's somewhere deep, nothing can be done. Then, uh, instead of using MRI and those equipment, we decided to push a little bit. EEG is very well known, is wearable. Also now optic, functional near infrared spectrometry, spectrometry is becoming also popular somehow. Uh, we have big machine, but we want to build something. You have only the cap you can put or remove, and you have the system working EEG. Uh, and uh, uh, and of course optic emitter optic receiver as maybe you can see in this image so we have optic uh, uh, emitter and around you have optic receiver this is we call we call it optrode means uh, optic technique alternating with uh, eeg and then you can have correlation you can have better performance so the idea here with array of those uh, optic emitter and receiver you can have image what it does means the optic when you have this banana, return information about the oxygenation rate inside the brain. When you have storm of uh, of seizures of or, or uh, uh, means neural activity, then you run uh, out uh, of uh, oxygen oxygenation means the concentration concentration of oxygenation can be very clearly uh, find where happens this uh, activity. So is is on the inside the brain? It can be uh, in different side. With this non-invasive, we can locate, locate the, the side the side of the brain, means the front, 
رايت سايد توب سايد اكسترا زين ميديكال سيرجن كريت اوبن ويندو كم ان اون توب اوف ذا برين بوت سيرفيس الكترود ان اوردر تو بي ايبل تو لوكيت مور وذ سم سوفيستيكيتد سوفتوير اند اس يو سي ان ذس ايمج ان ذا ميدل يو كان سي وي كان لوكيت ا ليتل بيت بيتر سو اجين اف ات از لوكيت بات از ان ذا باتم سايد ناثينج كان بي دان then we need to do sol- electronic solution i will show you how now with this of course optic and eeg uh, normal everyone is doing but we have some technique to be able to go uh, down because usually optic eeg is poor quality optic can go maybe to 1 cm but still not enough we want to do more and we talk about uh, time uh, mode means we can uh, locate to those photon coming from the bottom side. Uh, we collect those blue color here and we collect. So we have uh, active, uh, uh, maybe optrode, as I just mentioned. You have here a chip to do control. We have here uh, vexel, laser uh, emitter light. And we have photodiode to collect back the information. <clears throat> Different version of this system in package. This is 1.2 millimeter. Uh, recently, we have uh, one uh, centimeter. Uh, this is 1.2 centimeter. Sorry, means 12 millimeter. Here we have 10 millimeter. But here we have array of those photodiodes, not only one. Uh, and this is, of course, maximize the performance, uh, doing averaging, etc. We have a silicon interposer, a nice uh, technology in order to speed up the assembly and the work. Move to. Uh, try to locate uh, now with, uh, with uh, because actually with, uh, again, EEG and FNERS uh, give us data outside, and then we need technique to do, uh, to see where uh, come from, if it's inside. So we talk about here uh, effective connectivity analysis. This is more math, and the idea here is a technique allowed to uh, quickly to see which one of those electrodes in those electrode everywhere you can see array of electrode uh, is uh, is emitting and uh, which one is receiving so we talk about sync and uh, and of course uh, generate and source for example here i have nine the number five in the middle we we, we it was of course uh, with this technique uh, as SWIDTF. Uh, we can see uh, uh, number five is uh, is really the one who are emitting is the source, and all the other are uh, are, are absorbing, sinking. Uh, another example uh, uh, here. This I can maybe skip, but just to give you idea, with the group uh, of uh, uh, epileptic people, uh, mid surgeon in in Montreal, University of Montreal. This is uh, 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 have very large experience and. Uh, we were as engineering work helping them to go to Ancilla. Ancilla is this colored one inside the brain. Uh, access to there is very, very complex. So the idea to go there without again damaging, we have to do obliquely with a way. So we need to create tools and uh, so on, etc. So I can tell you quickly. So uh, with this, uh, we were able also with this uh, uh, connectivity analysis to see what's happening uh, somehow. Uh, with good result. Then another technique may be interesting for some uh, of you to learn about, to talk about super paramagnetic nanoparticle. Of course, nanotechnology, nanoparticle now is uh, a topic still, but you can imagine nanoparticle, very, very small uh, nano uh, scale, but with magnetic uh, characteristic. Then our brain, when we are uh, sinking uh, strong, do mathematics or i don't know electronic then uh, we emit of course current voltage as you know when we have activity when we have current you have of course uh, magnetic field so if you listen outside the, your brain with sophisticated equipment you may you may measure some magnetic activity it's very very small but it exists so if we put uh, n- those nanoparticles close by uh, your brain, my brain, and then when we have this emerging uh, neural uh, activity due to seizures, this uh, uh, optic, uh, uh, this uh, nanoparticle can be aggregated. Mm-hmm. 
globatic coming from the brain, from the Caesar. This is the purpose. The small nanoparticle was tes tested in uh, in rat and uh, in rat uh, just a slice of rat, very small slice again, or in rat uh, in in real rat uh, doing uh, putting those nano particle on some extremely very thin, very thin uh, uh, kind of back on on plastic. Now, uh, now uh, the, the idea is to isolate na nanoparticle from other uh, artifact coming from the brain cell, etc., etc. So this give you idea, and we can monitor. We're using IRM, uh, uh, MRI, uh, uh, magnetic uh, resonance imaging, MRI, in, in of course in English, uh, uh, give us those image. Now, uh, as I just mentioned, if uh, uh, is inside the brain nothing can be done but we can have a chip with electrode to to look to watch so we talk about one uh, onset detection detect this is actually you have a caesar here onset means here uh, and and uh, close by the beginning we talk about b between uh, two maybe a second till 15 second only it's very short but the idea if we can uh, quickly locate detect then we can stop. If not, you have this major activity in amplitude, exponential, and in frequency. So we build a system to see what's happening here in the beginning. And then uh, we build a system with, of course, uh, uh, over one time frame. We can uh, record those signal, remo remove the uh, uh, noise uh, with different technique, like about chopper here. And then we have... Uh, many channels not only one to make sure is not uh, again a false alarm every channel is measuring the amplitude variation and the frequency variation then every block again is optimized give you idea comparator uh, uh, decoder etc give you ideas these are uh, optimized to to fit with low power a chip with two millimeter square uh, was of course delivered and tested in order to locate those uh, Caesar. So this is here. We have a real signal again. Uh, we uh, we have a zoom, and uh, with this, uh, th three channel, we're detecting something, and then the external uh, output is uh, sending alarm. Of course, we have to put this on a small PCB, this chip, in order to run and uh, to do uh, testing. This is the system electrode uh, uh, detection. Then we talk about, um, of course, when we detect, we uh, turn on, activate these different block in order to come back and to stimulate. So this is the closed loop. After detection, we can stimulate and we can, of course, stop this uh, emerging uh, major activity. All other block here in order is to, of course, uh, uh, instruction and uh, regulate, uh, adjust the different parameter of stimulation and recording. Okay, then uh, uh, available device we don't have. We have only two. This is uh, one very old, but use it to stimulate the nerve, call it vagus nerve, as it helps a little bit, but doesn't solve big stuff. And then uh, Neuropace uh, also is not too new, but they have different version and only stimulating uh, kind of permanently, and it is not really effective, no sophisticated feedback. So now, of course, uh, 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 talk about uh, prediction. Uh, this is why I put this here. So the idea to be able not only 15 seconds or two seconds, we want to be on this zone called pre-ectal. Pre-ectal estimated to be 30 minutes, one hour, you know. So if we can uh, actually predict the, uh, the, uh, the coming of this Caesar, uh, 10 minutes, we will uh, celebrate. Five minutes will will be uh, uh, I don't know uh, extremely happy. It's very complex, not doable to someone say can do one hour. Don't believe him. Okay, and then we want to anyway to try to predict the uh, arrival of Caesar before it's too late. Then of course machine learning is uh, good tools for this application, and again uh, very large group. Uh, doing now uh, machine learning for epilepsy. Uh, so uh, I, uh, I I think you can see, do record those signals, 
mainly EEG, but you can have intracortical EEG, if you have a nurse, etc., signal processing, then uh, those uh, pre-processing, artifact removal, etc., then we talk about future extraction, classification, and try to detect this only detection, not prediction again. I will, I'm going to prediction. But here, actually, again, so the, the issue with, with Caesar uh, detection or Caesar uh, uh, processing is the number of future. The number of future is 100. It's not really 10 or 2 or I don't know. And it's dynamic. It's very complex. It works. It doesn't work. Usually, we talk about predict something you cannot predict. So this is why it's complex the human body and brain. So state of the art of uh, machine and deep learning accelerator to give you idea quickly. So in China, because I am in China, try to <laughs> talk here. So uh, famous Alibaba now is doing chip. This company doing chip, Huawei doing chip, all this to accelerate deep learning. Huh? And then another third, uh, fourth company. If, of course, you have many, many more, I guess, but I'm not showing. Outside China in industry, of course, you know those groups everyone was doing also chip now apple google facebook uh, you know about and then from university uh, uh, but maybe before this before university you can see those chip for industry application we talk about 300 watt you know this is, doesn't make any sense uh, minimum two watt uh, 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 very large chip very large performance but no need for bio anyway is not really not not useful at all is useless then uh, uh, in terms of uh, university, uh, academic side, you have, of course, a couple of places in China are very strong. Tsinghua University, well known, uh, have two generations so far. Chinese Academy of Science are very strong. Also, they have two generations. But uh, outside, uh, I think, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, IMAC, you know, uh, MIT in US, Stanford, you have many, 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 but of course I cannot put everything just to give you idea. Here also 100 uh, uh, Terra operation is very, very high performance, but uh, not dedicated for bio. This is for uh, industrial application, very large chip, cannot put this uh, anywhere in the body or in the brain. Then in terms of bio here, I, I put six different chip Actually, uh, you monitor GSSC this year, since maybe five years or more. Every year you have kind of chip for bio application. So here we have a, a few, but all of them are only for uh, classification. You know, only you have one start doing a little bit more talk about prediction and still preliminary. And this is actually uh, similar to the, to the topology I show early. This is actually to do detection again and wireless communication. So nothing in the prediction. So machine learning, deep learning, again, uh, this year with ISCC, we have a couple of chip to do uh, SVM classification, high performance for those application at the left side, Caesar prediction, neural signal translation, or imaging. And then uh, so far for bio, the problem with memory, as you know, for machine and deep learning is very big, need to be uh, focused. Uh, of course, uh, a scale, uh, down scale, now we talk about seven and five nanometer transistor, even three nanometer, but this doesn't come free. Uh, complexity uh, come with this to, to build something interesting. Uh, but so far, all what I show are not smart enough for scissor prediction. So we need to work at the level of algorithmic architecture, device material, etc., in order to have system operating 10 over 10 uh, operation and 1 milliwatt. OK, then uh, uh, quickly uh, just uh, tell you compromise between uh, machine learning and deep learning. Uh, uh, deep learning, high performance, but need energy. Machine learning is low performance, but also low energy. And they just give you idea. I don't. I don't want to elaborate here, but give you idea how now application. How many are pushing more and deep learning this time with all those technique around. Then uh, <clears throat> this is what uh, where we are at the algorithmic level. 
who are working on at, at those different level in parallel in here in, in my group now. So the idea is this chart here show you the four best design in terms of energy, memory, uh, precision, and sensitivity. You know, so this is actually means uh, red color is good. We need uh, we need uh, uh, precision and the sensitivity, but uh, the black color is not good. So this is not good. The black is very high, <laughs> means uh, need a lot of energy. Then you can see our design here at the end. We went from baseline model and we are uh, improving every time. So this is the last one with very, very little energy needed to do almost the same operation. Prediction, AI start in epilepsy in 1975. Means now is not to know what happened for epilepsy. Uh, we have even a conference for uh, Caesar prediction uh, was started uh, maybe 30 years ago in epilepsy. But now, of course, we can see the number of paper are booming uh, on the top. This actually, this slide is very uh, busy, give you idea. I, and also I cut between 75 and <laughs> 2012 to, to be able to explain something anyway. So first publication about prediction, because prediction is kind of learning, you know. It, is not uh, maybe sophisticated like now, but uh, that's it. Okay, anyway, uh, first in man trial uh, uh, around 2013, second giggle contest. So this is we have ecosystem in different place in Australia, in Germany, in MIT, etc. Having a lot of data, do uh, international competition co competition in order to do a, a high kind of uh, prediction using machine learning, deep learning. So our group, uh, all this green I just mentioned about, and uh, we have many uh, uh, maybe uh, hot uh, uh, contribution till now are interesting uh, on this field. Bladder control, uh, this is actually, as you see, uh, uh, everyone have a bladder, but uh, uh, have two problems, incontinence, you lost urine, or you cannot wait. So blockade, if it's blocked, what to do? This is a question we can ask ourselves, you know. If, if, if we lose the urine, no problem. You can re, uh, come back to be baby, at the, it's easy, but if you cannot wait, big problem. So we build a system in order to control uh, this and uh, open, the, open the sphincter, uh, external, of course, outcome, uh, uh, outlet, I, I mean, and then uh, put the pressure on the bladder using kind of pacemaker, one only stimulator and, uh, of course, uh, system. For the incontinence, uh, we, there exists one company doing a system like this, balloon, cuff, and uh, manual pump. So this implant inside the body, so you have to touch your skin of, on, of, in order to manipulate this pump, in order to move water from this balloon to this cuff to close the sphincter. When you want to void you you pump in order to do the inverse so you remove the water from here here so this is instead of using this manual pump we replace this with a system using bluetooth and you can control this by your by your uh, of course uh, um, uh, mobile mobile phone you know this is uh, quickly so uh, i can run here quickly so uh, uh, one hour already. So this is actually the system uh, sensor stimulator. It can be inside to do feedback inside or send out the information. So this is to show you also we, we do uh, measure, measurement wirelessly. Uh, this is actually external part. Uh, this is inside very small. Uh, this is three unit uh, equivalent using uh, Zarling system. The first one uh, 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 means uh, approved by FDA to transmit through the skin information at those frequency. And then we can predict avoiding, uh, not we can predicting, sorry, the fullness of the bladder in order. Because when we have accident, unfortunately, as I just show here, uh, the accident means uh, you don't feel what happened in your bladder. So uh, the brain is not connected anymore. Then you need system like this and you can the, the, the fullness and you can go to wait when it's time. So I have here a couple of slides to demonstrate how was 
done the work in terms of machine learning again in order to detect fullness. And uh, it can be, of course, if it's effective. We have a couple of uh, uh, high quality publication uh, and those uh, main journal also maybe you can refer if you want to. So actually quickly, you have many channels receiving signal like this and we can locate spike with many neuron, those neuron you can uh, have uh, uh, encode against those uh, those neuron and we can do integration and we can fit with this machine learning I just mentioned about. I have to skip unfortunately, so this give you idea. High precision also very low power, talk about uh, uh, this actually is the power uh, as you can see. So we have uh, a custom chip doing this. Last part, two, two minutes uh, about neurotransmitter. So this is two uh, image similar, but it means this is a two neuron cell and the synapse. So the idea is to go between those uh, neural cell at the synaptic level, try to attract those neurons to come inside the box, which we call uh, lab on chip, uh, inlet and outlet, we have electronic to control this. And then while they are uh, in, we can of course measure and uh, we can stimulate. This is technique to, to of course, uh, do measurement using capacitive sensor. Uh, we have a lot of work here. Maybe you can also consult this book, CMOS Capacitive Sensor for Lab on Chip Application. Uh, here, actually, how we manipulate those uh, neurotransmitters by the electrophoresis, magnetophoresis on chip. So this is actually means we have two electrodes. You can apply electric field. Uh, you can apply voltage, but with different phase, create electric field. This electric field have some force, and this force can manipulate those cells. So this is the idea, two neural cell, and you have the system from one side, lab on chip, from the other, other side, uh, other side is the electron. Okay, and then we have different prototype also here. Last one, we have a chip, eight by eight uh, biosensor, capacitive based. On top, we have... Uh, a matrix of uh, micro well, uh, micro machine by laser is glass. And then you can have parallel operation in order to test cell uh, together, for example, with antibiotics or with uh, any other uh, test you want to see if this if the cell changing is uh, healthy or not and, and so on. So the topic I just show to work with brain is multidisciplinary, microelectronic, microfluidic, my wireless, of harvesting energy, microfabrication, assembly, packaging, biology, uh, of course, without working with, with medical group, life science, we cannot really push on those topic. All kinds of tests. Any test you can imagine is needed here, from chip to system to humidity to, and then this is the microsystem topic, sensor, actuator, and this smart medical device application. Multidisciplinarity is to, just to show you on this graphic uh, from 2010 till now, more and more the topic now in, in engineering, when you do electronic mainly, electronic without any application is not really needed this time, I can say. <laughs> and then, uh, but uh, this topic here, the ra this big circle, red one, is to tell you when you write a paper on bio, you refer at least 50% of your paper are outside your uh, field of interest. And also your paper is referred by many disciplines outside of your topic. So summary, intracortical Antra stimulation and neuro recording for neurogeneration to show how the, the brain is complex, is, uh, need, need more work to be understood. So show you these different topic neurotransmitter blood are just example uh, and the challenge are a lot we need really uh, new generation to join and to work on those topic in order to be able to do neuromagnetic this is my group in Hangzhou uh, very nice green color as you see the best tea the best tea in the world coming from Hangzhou uh, and this is the, behind my group and this is the university thank you so much
Oh, you didn't hear me? Ah, so, sorry. Um, so I was saying that uh, the work you, you are doing is really impressive. Uh, your presentation presented lots of things on different uh, dedicated to uh, disease. So really, it's a really an impressive work you, you've showed us. And uh, as you can see, there is lots of questions in the chat. So I think we can go for it. Um, so the first question is from Denis Flores. So thank you for your presentation. Do the recover vision take into, into consideration a global processing coming from the sensor network, signal sensor? Each one, or each one requires its own signal processing in its task. Uh, yeah, the answer, uh, of course, uh, the story is more you have channel, better is, uh, more you can have, uh, uh, yeah, I think the answer is yes, we need really to work with uh, individual channel, because the, the idea here, if you put the many channel, many electrodes close by each other, then it can be confusing, means you can, we talk about overlapping, so you need space, then when you have space, one electrode is bringing signal from many cells, and then is there, there are a mean to do uh, 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 what you call uh, uh, neural or actual potential or spike uh, sorting, and those spike sorting, we can uh, locate where it comes from, exactly from which those spike from which the neural cell, and uh, uh, this is the way. So yeah, yes, the idea is we need to, from one side, to have clear information coming from every cell, but uh, uh, as you can see, as you know now about AI and all these, uh, uh, all group doing imaging means put those information in image, uh, image uh, format, in order to be able to run those uh, neural network uh, algorithm. But we are trying in our group, uh, in my group here, to see, uh, to do only uh, kind of one channel by one channel, means uh, serial information, uh, and uh, compare. And uh, I think we are more, more winner. We use uh, actually raw signal. We don't have really to spend uh, energy and resources to do filtering, etc. Uh, is, uh, is is the way of, uh, we believe, uh, we are uh, pushing on this direction. Okay, thank I you. I answered, yeah, okay. Yeah, I think so. Uh, then, in the neural recording, the electrodes should fulfill some minimal output power in its signal. Does the conditioning of the signal cover the noise coming from it, or is it also necessary post-process? Can, can you show this? Because you showed yeah, yeah, yeah. the uh, this is the one in the neural recording. The electrode uh, should fulfill some minimal output power and it is signal. Does the conditioning of the signal cover the noise coming from it or is it also necessary post process? Uh, means, I think the question are those electrode active or passive? So, so far, uh, now. Now, uh, I think uh, the, uh, uh, the status of uh, main uh, very active group, <laughs> they are using active, active electrode, trying to uh, maybe cancel uh, the noise as much as possible on, on site instead of bringing out uh, to, to the system and to cancel later. Uh, yeah, then, uh, of course, this actually a story of noise uh, uh, performance to improve uh, is, uh, is uh, undergoing very well. Okay, then uh, another question, uh, still from Denis. So what could be a good technique to avoid the external scattering sources, which could affect the embedded medical devices? And this could be exploiting to wearables where we have more external sources. But um, it would be a good technique to avoid the external scattering sources, which could affect the embedded medical device, and this could be exploited to wherever. 
Yeah, I think this is uh, not uh, not clear the question, but um, yeah, wearable wearable uh, system, as I just mentioned, uh, unfortunately, the 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 human system body, some dysfunction, some organ. For example, I just mentioned about the bladder. If you don't go to the spinal cord, nothing can be done. You have to be invasive. A wearable is not really useful. But combining both means you have wearable part external in order to collect energy and then transmit this energy to inside using other uh, maybe uh, coupling technique, as I just mentioned. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, of course, uh, uh, but we cannot, and we don't have internal source uh, of energy yet. The energy must come from outside. We don't want to use battery because battery even is rechargeable, but it is, it is, uh, it cannot survive longer. Uh, any leakage can have a lot of dam damage. So even we have scattering, we have, we lost a lot of energy. Only 10% is enough to, and actually outside the body, we have standard. We can have uh, energy, no problem. Uh, the level are well known. Everyone is respect those norm in order to avoid any, uh, maybe uh, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, heating or 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 damage. So no problem for this. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, then concerning the epilepsy, uh, what type of optical solutions are interesting for fossil for localization? Do a VCSEL could produce enough signal for that? And thank you again for your your interesting talk. Okay, yeah, yeah, nice, uh, nice question. Smart, De Dennis Flores. <laughs> Denis, thank you so much for your question, Denny. Okay, so we, yeah, uh, um, uh, actually, Vectel, as I just mentioned. We have standard, we have norm, you know, you cannot really take big laser and mm -hmm. bombard the brain with this. So they, you have you have limit uh, and those limit actually, yes, produce enough signal in order to to cross the skull, the skin, the skull, the all those, uh, I think, layers to go to the brain. And inside the brain, we can have around one centimeter. So this is en enough funny to do much more better much better than eeg normal okay but uh, uh, now what other optical solution again uh, if we want to be wearable no other optical solution this is a functional nurse is the best one but we are trying to improve as i just mentioned to go a little bit deep that um, means um, there are technique <laughs> to 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 go deeper with the same uh, power source with the same la laser source with the same pixel, you know, so uh, it's improving, but um, we cannot really uh, uh, be more aggressive. You know? Yeah, yeah, it's hard uh, yeah, to think about. Yeah, I, I understand. And there is still other question from Denis. So, uh, and he's saying is it is the last one. <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. So, in the prediction necessary algorithm, could be considered predictive and adaptive control techniques from automation systems, or there are not suited for that. Yeah, I think uh, as I just mentioned, people were using all kind of uh, predictive technique from uh, from control from from signal processing uh, 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 for uh, many decades, you know, and uh, uh, as I just mentioned, 1975 started doing this. Uh, uh, it helped, but I'm not sure it it is uh, it can adaptive for adaptive. Uh, I think uh, Kalman filter was used. Uh, there are a couple of technique were used, but because because the nothing stable on on those data because we have a lot of data the data never never enough good or always missing something and when they are complete if a complete is a changing for example we have a we have i have caesar myself you record something and but when you come the second day to try to do some fitting 
you will find something different. So it's, it's very complex. Any prediction algorithm can help, but cannot solve. Okay. Yeah, it's a not a, it's a, it's a, the issue is really uh, hard to to solve. I think it's not a the solution is not a really simple to find in all of this. So, and no, we still have one more question from Denise. So, what are the alternatives to avoid deep machine learning complexity? Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So actually. Um, this is uh, you need expert on doing uh, uh, maybe hardware. Uh, uh, machine learning complexity. Uh, uh, talk about deep. Avoid deep machine learning complexity. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> uh, so I just mentioned we are optimizing this because actually the classical way of doing just uh, CNN and uh, now we have many new algorithms like binary, like uh, spike, like etc. Those alternatives are uh, much better for different applications. So you cannot use the same for all applications. So depend on the application, you can. And then also in these, you can optimize uh, the, the topology of this. Of course, everyone knows the problem is memory trying to use me memory store, etc. So nothing magic at this time, but you have to have different architecture of those classical one to uh, optimize. Uh, you need time, you need to be uh, uh, knowledgeable how, how those machine and deep learning working in order to cut something not necessary. You know, usually we have uh, any system when you have to, uh, to converge you can accelerate conversion. You know, you can have uh, maybe uh, default state to go to, and then you can tune later something like that. So these are uh, the the process we uh, I suggest to use to improve uh, machine and deep learning technique. Okay. okay, many thanks. I think it was our last questions. Yes, it is. So many thanks uh, for being here today. It was uh, really an interesting talk, really impressive, in fact. And uh, I think uh, students uh, are really uh, impressed. So we are really pleased to have you for our last talk of the year, uh, of this year. Oh, so, cool. Yeah, yeah, it was really cool. Uh, we would have better, uh, it would, would have been better if you, it was in Bordeaux in person because uh, it's uh, more friendly. Uh, person than in life, but I hope that you enjoy the experience uh, here. Well, I, I hope you liked my presentation. I wish you uh, good success in uh, all of you and your uh, career. You are the new generation, guys. And uh, happy new year. Happy, uh, happy uh, 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 Christmas, of course, to everyone. Yeah. And uh, I hope uh, 2021 much, will be much, much better than 2020. Yeah, we all, we all hope. I think uh, we all are really uh, uh, we really hope so that uh, we can see you next year and uh, be like uh, before. Like uh, I think we are thinking about that uh, right now. So many right. thanks for all of you. All right. And, uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Have a so good bye. day. Bye bye.